Welcome to Social Jumpstart, the cable television program about social media. I'm Mike Walpert, and our guest this week is Steve Sarner. He's Vice President of Marketing at Tagged.com, and he's also industry luminary, a longtime thought leader in the social space, and a guy, quite frankly, who was around when it all started in. Steve, welcome to the show. Thanks, Mike. Luminary? Luminary. That's a, that's a good word. <laughs> that is a good word. I use it in the hopes that someday somebody will describe me as one, so keep that in mind. <laughs> Steve. I'll do my best. Thanks for being on the show. You uh, have been around literally uh, since, since maybe not the beginning of the social space, but really since the very start. Tell me a little bit about what it looked like then in the early days, and then as, as we go through, we'll, we'll talk about how things have changed and, and where we are today and what you see in the future. But how did it start? Well, sure. I, you know, if you want to go way back, you're talking about bulletin boards and chat forms and things of that nature, but that wasn't really the social uh, you know, aspect at that point in time. That was the old Web 1.0 days, so right. to speak. And it was really in 03 or so. And I think the first real social network to speak of was Friendster. Uh, which came on the scene about 03 and really allowed people to, to connect and profile themselves and, and to message beyond email and beyond just I am and uh, really show their lives and, and, and connect with their friends. And then originally kind of as a, a, a dating aspect, you know, meet my friends of friends as a way to connect people th through that aspect. And that became, I think, the very first social network and it exploded. Uh, in fact, Friendster very well could be the social network today that Facebook is had they been able to figure out how to keep the site up. Uh, they were simply uh, were overwhelmed with the amount of traffic. So, so their failure was technical? I think uh, in, in large measure. Uh, the, the biggest issue Friendster had was, was the technical. They could not handle the explosive growth. They had s lightning in a bottle beyond even their wildest imaginations. Uh, and then you saw a lot of other players, uh, especially right here in San Francisco's Silicon Valley, you know, see that. And as so often in the internet, whether it's social networks or uh, some type of new uh, product being sold or, or something along those lines, there's a lot of people who jump on the bandwagon and try to replicate it. Uh, try to make it better, and you, you saw an explosion of, of different uh, networks kind of crop up uh, all over the place. Right. Um, and, and rapidly, the, the pack began to, to clutter up, and then a few leaders emerged. Yeah, I think the, 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 there, there was a big pack cluttering up, there's no doubt about that, and then places got different strongholds. And interesting on Tagged at the time, um, when Greg Sang and Johan uh, Shiner-Smith who were Stanford physics PhD candidates uh, in their early 20s um, and had several incubator firms in place, including Tagged, and saw the potential of social networking. They basically, they saw MySpace um, using music and being kind of the adult social network. They saw this other Harvard kid, because they had come out of Harvard four years earlier, but this other Harvard kid named Mark uh, start a social network just for college students, and frankly, just for Ivy League to begin with, and, and then expand to other colleges. Uh, and they, the original business plan was, we'll be the social network for high school students. So the whole plan of Tagged originally was, we'll be for the 13 to 18 year old high school student, you'll have Facebook for the college students, MySpace kind of for everybody else, and, and you know the high fives and orchards and um, uh, gathers and all kinds of multiply, all kinds of different ones started cropping up around there. Bebo was another one as an example too. Right. Uh, actually, Bebo also tried to focus on that high school student at the time as well to some degree. And younger even. And even younger. Yeah. Oh, creating a walled garden in a place online at the right. time was kind of unusual. Right, so those were the original plans. And um, at Tags, in Tags' case, we still saw MySpace um, just be able to really grow in all the age demographics. So um, we weren't really able to carve out that niche just to ourselves. And then Facebook made a decision to open up to the whole world as well. And at that point, the race was on and, and tagged into the race as well in 05, 06 to uh, be the world's social network. And, and that, that was an interesting time. You and I have both been around the space for a while. And you might not remember this, but you were the first guy who said to me, you know, I'm having fun with this site called Facebook. Yep. And I remember in my visionary self, even back then, saying, another social network? Nobody's ever going to beat MySpace. Right. So, <laughs> uh, and it turns out that wasn't really the case. Not at all. In fact, um, you know, Facebook is just is a beautifully, eloquently done site. 
And it just led people into social networking and provided just a very clean cut way of doing it. And I think MySpace was having trouble also with, with capacity issues and just being just too confusing uh, for the masses. So when they had an alternative, uh, much more structured, um, a much a much quicker functional, some of the elements, some of the technical elements and product was so well designed on Facebook that uh, that, that you know, gave Facebook the, the critical uh, mass um, momentum right. to really start building. And, uh, and that was in about the 05, 06 uh, time frame yeah. when, when things started getting going. And the, the, and the social networks started coalescing on a number of fronts because all of a sudden LinkedIn wasn't just some weird, quirky thing. All of a sudden there were people even, well, not in 05 and 06 on the East Coast. It took them a little bit longer to catch on. But right. all of a sudden Facebook be started to become a, a, a pillar for that part. LinkedIn became kind of the business networking site. And but the conversations changed a little bit over the years, it, it seems to me. Tell me a little bit, uh, some sites are focused on, on connecting with old friends. Some sites are connected with uh, meeting new friends. Can you talk a little bit about the differences and how and why that works? Sure. So as the social networking landscape evolved, and it's still evolving to this day, of course, um, you saw that uh, LinkedIn really carved itself out and did a beautiful job of being the place for your professional friends right. um, and a professional social network. And um, it's really, they started differentiating themselves. And then you also see a number of networks being having stronger geographical strength, uh, areas of strength as well. So most social networks are designed to keep in touch with people you already know. Um, you've got LinkedIn for your professional friends, Facebook for your real life friends, uh, Foursquare, which is a location-based social network that you really want to make sure that somebody you know well because they actually share your cell phone number. In fact, I think, I think even to this day, your cell phone number is, is uh, public uh, to your friends on Foursquare. Mm. So, you know, these are things that you, 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 know, you want to take into consideration. And that's where, where TAG kind of said, you know, the one area that nobody's really addressing is meeting new people. And, and new friends. And that's where TAG uh, pivoted in, in the late 07, early 08 to work to be the social network to meet new people. So while everybody else is focused on how to find your old friends from high school, mm -hmm. uh, TAG comes into the space, does a pivot, and begins to look how to expand your social horizons. Exactly. And, uh, and the conversations that take place on, on TAG, similar to, I mean, social networking, social media conversations, are kind of similar. These are real people having real conversations. Uh, they're, they're similar, but they're very different in some respects as well. Um, on a Facebook platform, it's really, really designed and to be authentic in terms of um, you have a relationship, you know this person, and, uh, and you are actually friends. And it's very um, kind of strange, actually, to get a friend request on Facebook with somebody you don't really know. On LinkedIn, it might be acceptable from a professional standpoint. Maybe somebody you uh, aren't really, really well known with, just a professional associate, you might LinkedIn with that person. Right. But you know, on Facebook, not everybody, but most people will want to actually know that person versus to get some random stranger uh, who wants to become friends with them. Um, on Tag, we actually encourage and have um, features that try to help make people make new friends. Uh, some people use it for dating. Um, some people use it for um, uh, playing social games. And the other area that we're working on is shared interest. So what you'll find on Tagged is uh, on Facebook, somebody may only have 20 or 30 friends because, uh, from real life, but on Tag, they may have 2,000 friends. Uh -huh. And they use it in a completely different use case where, you know, they post different photos and it's very socially engaging, certainly not like LinkedIn. They're not looking for a job necessarily on TAG, but they're having kind of fun social entertainment uh, with, uh, with each other and meeting new people along the way. Let's, let's talk a little bit about the, the other networks, the other platforms. Sure. Uh, a lot of times we talked about Facebook, and Facebook seems to be, or I've noticed a lot of my Facebook friends seem to be battening down the hatches a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who got off of Foursquare because it was it was too much. Uh, people use Twitter a little bit differently. Right. And at the same time, the world of social media seems to be becoming more transparent and more open and uh, tagged as a good example of that. Where do you see where do you see where do you see things headed? 
I mean, where do you, the conversation is becoming more complex because we have more people to talk to now. We have more people in more places to talk to. Uh, we used to talk about stuff in social media that we got from the news, right. from the broadcast channels. Right. Now it seems that the broadcast channels are talking about what they're finding in social media. Yep. There are a number of, of network shows now that are about YouTube. Yep. That, it seems the world's a little bit upside down. When I see a Twitter logo on the network news at night as if, well, it says on Twitter, so it must be true, I, the world's kind of turning upside down, but that's just indicative of how rapidly the broadcast model is changing to the new media, social media model. Sure. Where do we go from here? I think it just gets more social, and it, um, there's going to be more things falling down. There's going to be, there's going to be at least another, I, I think you'll see another huge privacy blow up in the near future with the Facebook and, and uh, the new social readers where, where people are having stories that they just happen to read, get posted in their news feed. Right. <clears throat> and I think that a lot of people are going to be uncomfortable with that. Um, but I think those are bumps along the road. Uh, I think that your social brand is more important than ever and is, I mean, is just going to get even more so. Uh, you know, people need to find you, find your business, uh, and you need to be on, on these various platforms and you need to be able to communicate with, you know, whether they're friends or for, I know you'd work a lot with businesses, potential businesses, sure. to be able to communicate with potential customers. So, um, I think that, uh, there's going to be more and better tools to help you manage uh, a lot of this, but I think the complexity level will, will, will continue to increase. And, you know, we still have to see what Google is going to come out with. Microsoft has some things in the works. I can tell you that we've got some really interesting things in, in our own labs right now that uh, uh, have the potential to solve whole new problems and whole new social issues that we're really excited about. Hopefully next year I can come back on the show. You could hint a little bit or? Yeah, I can hint, yeah, sure. So the, <laughs> the hint is basically, uh, you know, wouldn't it be great for you to take LinkedIn to the next level, and I'm not saying that we're building something like LinkedIn, mm -hmm. but really find like-minded people that share similar interests that you could have a lot of value out of, out of meeting. Right now, with friendships, it's all random. It's primarily proximity related. Right. You become friends with people in your school, in your workplace, in your neighborhood. It's pretty much about it. There can be some great friends and relationships and people that could add a lot of value to your life and I'm not just talking about dating or playing social games, but in expertise, in business, in, uh, in a spiritual way, what, whatever, whatever the interest level may be for you. But, you know, there was no way in the past to be ever, ever meet this person. Well, now we have this amazing thing through the Internet and through mobile with millions of people interacting. And, you know, tag, we have 100 million registered users. And that's, that's, that's a lot of people. But, you know, Facebook has 800 million active users. That's a lot of people. Well, there's 7 billion people in the planet, 2 billion of them are connected, 3 billion of them will be connected even in the next year or two. So that's a huge opportunity. And it sounds great. The hard part is how do we take from 100 million people and find the 10 people you should meet? Well, that's exactly, that is the hard part. Yep. Because I became, uh, you talked about, and, and we both talked about people battening down the hatches on some of these social networks. I early on took the opposite approach. Mm -hmm. I decided I'm going to see where this Facebook thing goes. All right. So I maxed out 5,000 friends. Uh, people make fun of me and find it very entertaining. And quite frankly, I find it, without the use of clever use of lists and such, completely unmanageable. Correct. Because these are not 5,000 friends. Mm -hmm. These are 5,000 Facebook connections, which is great and has served a purpose. But so the social media the real juicy connections are going to have to be built around stuff that I care about, that, I, right. that I'm interested in. As a business owner, I would want to be connecting with people who are at least interested in the industry, the idea of what I do. Sure. And maybe I can give them some value, become the expert, offer them some tools, tips, techniques. Mm -hmm. uh, on a personal level, I'd like to be in a place in my online uh social media interactions where I'm talking to people who are interested in stuff that I'm interested in. Sure. And so you see this really moving fairly rapidly in that direction. Definitely. And I, and you're right. There's so much noise. And there's a lot of people working to help you manage that noise and mm -hmm. curate that. And that's going to be a big part of it. And then the next really, really interesting opportunity that we see is if we can go out and cherry pick the exact right people 
that would make sense for you to meet on any type of level, a shared interest, a business, a personal thing, a passion point, whatever the case may be. And that's kind of the problem that we're working on for the future. Ah, because the algorithms, certainly from Facebook suggested friends, seem to just be some conglomeration of, well, you have 62 million friends in common and and this it's a, yeah, it's, a, it's an algorithm off of a social graph. Right. So instead of being a social graph, we would be looking in the future of being more intellectual, emotional graphs. Yeah, and interest graphs. And you see some sites just coming onto the scene today in this whole social discovery area, which Tag pioneered mm -hmm. and um, is, is really heating up. Uh, Pinterest uh, interest is, is, is one that's using an interesting interest way of, of uh, matching people up, perhaps. Also, local proximity uh, sites are, are popping up uh, more and more. We're trying to connect you if you're in the same general location to, to meet each other in person. There's so many different flavors of, uh, of what's going on in, in social right now, a lot of experimentation. Uh, there's, there's many, many... Um, new new uh, variations that are just going to continue to grow. We can't even think of them all yet. It, 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 I, can, I can understand they can't even think of them at all because I'm certainly not a, a, an average user. I mean, I'm a heavy social media right. user, and it, sometimes it, it's overwhelming. Sure. So for the, the a lot of our audience tends to be, you know, small, mid-sized businesses, entrepreneurs, people who are looking to really function in the social media space. Mm -hmm. And so... The first step a lot of times is to kind of pick what you're good at or what really turns you on or what you like and, and begin there. Right. So it sounds like this is going to become easier. I think it's going to get harder before it gets easier, frankly. Because, oh. I mean, let me restate that. Sure. It can definitely be easier for some of the main sites, places you have to be. You know, you have to be on Facebook. You have to be on Twitter if you're a business person sure. looking to build business and customers and embrace social media. You got, you're right. You have to be on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn. Right. But beyond that. Beyond that, there are places maybe you should be. It could make sense to be on Foursquare, depending on the type of business and your location and where mm -hmm. you are. Maybe a complete waste of time for you for other places, but it's a new shiny thing and, and a lot of people want to be there anyway. Um, oftentimes, tag wouldn't make sense for, for some people. Um, there's other sites that, that uh, can, you know, the review sites are very social. I mean, Yelp is a great example. Uh, there are some people that have to be on Yelp. And be active there and, right. and, and make it a big part of their business. So depending on the nature of your business, the nature of your industry, you know, being on social, uh, social media is a critical part. How you use it, it's really another communication vehicle. And, um, and it can be used in a lot more measurable and more effective way than a lot of the uh, promotional vehicles of the past, though. Sure. And you, so what I'm getting the sense of is that there are giant players in the space, mm -hmm. obviously, and, you're, and tagged is one of them. Uh, and so rather than a, a splintering to a zillion little micro sites, micro networks, you're looking at, at perhaps tag going in the direction of beginning to silo off and, and make connections available to people based on these on these sub interests. So I should I could go conceivably from this broad space where I operate with all these tons of Facebook and, and, and Twitter and other connections to where I have really a core group of people that I actually connect with, learn from. I mean mm -hmm. I, I, I love meeting people on the social network so I can get better at what I do. Right. You know, and there's sites even trying to solve that problem today. Quora on, on the question and answer. Right. <clears throat> Path is a, is a site that's going to limit to only your 50 closest friends. And that's all good and interesting, but again, it doesn't allow you to branch out and make new connections. And that's where we think there's a real opportunity. That there's, you're right, you've got 5,000 Facebook friends today. You, you got a lot going on. Right. Already. Too much. And, and, but if we can come up with a way to help match up some people you would never even be able to touch because of, of proximity or coming in contact with, as social as you are. Right. We could add a lot of value, and that would be a, we'd be another one of the you know one of your key cornerstone foundational sites that you would see as a, as a huge resource. Yeah. You know we're that today to to millions and millions of people. Again, using this more for social gaming and dating, and a little bit of shared interest and friendships. We think that the market is as big as Facebook, frankly, in sure. terms of the opportunity to help connect and make, build new friendships. Right. We think it's a great opportunity. Turning uh, what's really a super fun site into something where people are making really valuable connections. Sure. Because that would be, I think, of, of enormous value to anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, I 
of, of uh, taking the example of your 50 real core close friends. Right. I already know them. Sure. I already know what they know. Right. Uh, not, not entirely. But I'm continually fascinated by meeting new people that have relevant and relative experience to m maybe not exactly what I do, but stuff that I'm interested in or in some ways stuff that I'm not even clear that I'm interested in until mm -hmm. I meet them. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think like LinkedIn's done a really good job of late in terms of adding more uh, depth into their social graph and their um, uh, ability to recommend what your business connections are doing and recommend new business connections. Uh, I've been really impressed with some of their work, and we're keeping an eye on that as well. And I think LinkedIn could be another, for small and mid-sized businesses, LinkedIn could be another foundational site, uh, along with Google+. Plus. The jury's out on exactly what's going to happen there, too. But when Google gets social networking right, and they might have done it this time with Google+, Plus, we'll mm -hmm. see. You know, uh, it's it's a powerful vehicle. Uh, Google is has been, is, and will be even more so. Um, so you know, again, there's it's a ev quickly evolving um, landscape with a lot of complexity, but one that uh, you know small business and mid sized business owners need to be very very aware of and, and on top of to you know, to take advantage of what it offers because it it offers an amazing promotional and communication vehicle. Right. It 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 changes the way business owners, let's speak specifically sure. towards those, uh, we both have uh, old school marketing backgrounds, mm -hmm. and so that, that broadcast model completely changed now. For somebody, an entrepreneur, business owner that's watching us tonight, I, I think in some way they might be feeling more overwhelmed yep. instead of less overwhelmed. Yep. But it, in reality, it's I have found with people that I work for and business owners that, that I know, that getting started is half the battle, mm -hmm. and then a little bit of consistency, half the battle. Uh, and, and so really things are going to begin to get easier, because if you're having interplay with people who are real prospects, mm -hmm. uh, I would imagine that, that viewers and business owners would find it a little bit more uh, interesting, a little bit more exciting, a little more compelling to have that conversation. Absolutely. And, you know, I think getting started is always the hardest. I mean, that's certainly, but, but the cons consistency aspect of it, I think, is a really important one. Right. You do have to put a little time into this. Um, not a lot, necessarily, but you do have to put a little effort into it. And I think that not only the prospects and gaining new sales, but the fact of being able to get immediate feedback, to solve problems earlier, to find out, you know, problems that you may not have, somebody may have walked out of your store upset, and you, you may not have even known it, but then you, you find out after the fact, they, they don't write you a letter or anything like that, but they post it somewhere. Right. Well, that's important to respond, not just from your overall reputation, but you know your chance to solve a problem for somebody that you didn't even know realized was there to begin with. And, and to change that conversation, be part of that conversation, write that conversation, um, and, and you know, demonstrate the fact that you know, you're, you're a great business, a great service provider, and, and help you get some market research. Maybe you find out what type of products or services you are or are not offering. Um, so not only can you uh, garner a new prospect, there's the, the f basically free for market research element right. that comes into social media, which is a really powerful thing. And it all starts with uh, listening. Sure. The, the, the big fundamental foundational difference between broadcast and social is that somebody, a business person, a business owner, new to the social space can at least begin listening. Exactly. Setting Google alerts, monitoring Twitter, searching Facebook to find out uh, there's a conversation going on. Right. The question is, uh, as a business owner, is that business owner part of the conversation? Right. And is the conversation positive or negative? Right. And they should be involved either way. Completely. And, and to your point, and I think a lot of businesses kind of miss this boat, is they go in immediately thinking old school, I got to just push my message out. Well, step back and listen to the conversation. Think about what's being, you know, jump in where you can add value. Right. Don't just jump in to say, look at me, look at me. Jump in when you have something worthwhile to say, whether it's fixing an issue or suggesting something that's in the conversation or, 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 or getting involved at a, at a higher level. Right. So if I'm hearing you correctly, you, and I say the same thing, uh, stage one of social media is learn to listen. Absolutely. Set up your outposts. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you have your platforms and that this makes sense. You have some brand presence, but... Uh, this is not broadcast. No. People, people should be listening, joining the conversation, but if there's chest thumping, it should uh, s 
not not be happening on the networks. It's, exactly. It's I mean, embarrassing. It, it, it's a conversation, you know. It's and a I'm I'm heading down to the uh, Word of Mouth Marketing Association uh, on a panel there, and we were one of the early uh, members of of uh, WOMA, Word of Mouth Marketing, and it's it's really a. It's the most valuable type of marketing, but learning it and understanding how to harness the power of it is is the tricky part. I'm learning every day on it myself. Right, because the conversation continues. <laughs> Indeed, it does. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. So, takeaways for uh, for our folks is to not get overwhelmed, mm -hmm. to get started, to get started listening, and to really scan the landscape, be a part of it, and know that what's coming down the road will become perhaps more overwhelming in the short term, but in the long term, more meaningful. Absolutely, and it's here to stay. I mean, if anybody has any doubt about that, you really should put that to bed. I mean, social is really what's going on today, and uh, it's really not that hard. It can be a little bit overwhelming, but you know, with a little bit of guidance, uh, a little bit of practice, uh, and and you know just just having somebody give you give you some some tips on you know how to utilize some of these tools it can make a huge difference. I've seen a number of businesses just just really um, have fabulous results from from from. The beauty of it is too. Most of it's sweat equity. It's not like you're paying a check out to somebody. Right. It's something you can do on your own to to help your own business, your own organization, uh, with 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 time versus having to write a check and hope. Right. Social media is not free. It doesn't cost money. It costs human capital instead of right intellect right, and, and time, yeah, mm -hmm. time and energy. Steve, thank you for being on the show. I appreciate it. Our guest this week has been Steve Sarner. Vice President of Tagged.com, a social media luminary, and uh, at this point, uh, historian as well, and forward-thinking visionary. There we go. There we go. I'll try my best for you, Michael. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for watching the show. This has been another episode of Social Jumpstart, television about social media. I'm Mike Walpert, and we'll see you next time.